radiometric, carbon-14, potassium argon, and uranium lead, are dating methods developed to try to measure the age of fossils, rocks, or samples that contain organic matter. Just how accurate is it? Why are there so many different dating methods? First, carbon-14 has been proven to totally dissipate in less than 50,000 years, yet it is continually found in petrified wood, rocks, fossils, coal, and diamonds that have been estimated by other measuring methods to be billions of years old. Second, these measuring techniques were used on living specimens such as animals and trees, and were measured to be millions of years old. Third, soft tissues and muscles have been found around the bones of fossils, that were dated to be millions of years old. The belief in how the world and universe came into existence, is more of a philosophical belief than a scientific belief. Since none of us were present during its creation, if we believe in a materialistic world without a loving God, it's easy to believe in a possible existence of billions of years. Thirteen point seven eight seven billion years is the age of our universe according to evolutionists. But science defines itself as data measurements, observations, and research in pursuit of facts. If you assume a conclusion that the Earth is billions of years old, without examining all the evidence that refutes it, then your belief is on faith and not science. From a biblical standpoint, God did not create the earth with a look of molten lava and volcanoes. He created the earth with forests, rivers, mountains, oceans, and all living creatures, each coming into existence with the appearance of age. The trees already had fruits and seeds, and all living creatures were created as adults. Here's what is overlooked during the dating process. Number 1. Conditions during formation. It is assumed that, when an object is formed, that only main or parent elements were present, such as uranium or potassium, and that there were no other smaller or daughter elements present, such as lead and argon. Do you know how bones become fossils? The soil surrounding it interacts, and penetrates the bones with water and bacteria, and change its composition. But during formation, there are countless environmental conditions, that could have easily affected its dating measurement. Number 2. Closed formation. It is assumed that, no other elements interacted with the object after it was formed, and did not become contaminated by other elements. Whether it's during formation or after formation, for no contamination to occur, any fossil would have to be totally isolated, which is not a reality for any accurate measuring system. Number 3. Consistent decay rate. It is assumed that all radioactive decay rates have never changed. Are there any conditions in the environment that could accelerate decay rates? 
it has already been proven that decay rates change for humidity, temperature, solar neutrons. Earthquakes Volcanic eruptions Flooding and most recently, nuclear fallout. Some will say that, there was no fallout in the past, but current fallouts have already changed all assumed measurements in the entire world. With all these considerations, do you believe that every dating method is accurate? Not even close. What is never mentioned in the data, but later learned from external interviews is that, most scientists do not list the dates that they do not agree with. For instance, if a fossil is being dated, and the measurement data has come out to be 4,000 years old, then that data is thrown out, because it does not support their idea that, it should be millions of years. Now, check out this conundrum from many evolutionists. We can discover the age of a rock layer by the fossils found in it, and we can determine the age of a fossil by the rock layer it is found in. Let's test this theory out right now. These next three images will show, petrified wood vertically positioned between three to four layers of rocks dated between 60 million and 500 million years old but the petrified wood are all dated between 20,000 and 50,000 years old. Could it be that the factors in determining the ages are wrong? Isn't it more likely that the wood was rapidly buried with these other layers, that had different amounts of compression for each layer that was laid down? This next image shows fossils that are spread out over multiple layers, with one end of the fossil being dated at 100 million years, and the top end of the same fossil to be dated at 25 million years. How could this organism live for 75 million years? Could it be that the factors in determining the ages are wrong? What else has been found in rock layers, that just doesn't make sense. In Texas, a 400 million year old rock was discovered, to have a hammer with a wooded handle and a 96% pure iron head embedded in it. The wood handle had already turned to coal. But the carbon dating on the hammer was estimated to be 500 million years. Why would the hammer be older than the rock? Could it be that the factors in determining the age are wrong? In West Virginia, a 300 million year old large chunk of coal was discovered, to have a 12 inch handcrafted ringing bell buried inside. The bell was made of copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, iodine, and selenium. Could it be that the factors in determining the age are wrong? In Colorado, a large piece of coal that came from a vein, that was 300 feet below the surface, was discovered to have a small iron pot. No dating was performed on the coal, but scientists claim that all coal takes a minimum of 300 million years to form. Could it be that the factors that in determining the age are wrong? How did these objects get trapped inside rocks and coal deposits? The answer is very simple. During the biblical flood of the entire earth approximately 4,350 years ago, massive amounts of vegetation was covered by mud and soil, undergoing enormous amounts of pressure and heat, turned into coal, after only a few thousand years. Billions of people and many of their artifacts and everyday household items were buried along with all of the vegetation. Only because these objects were made of strong metals, and molded wood, were they able to retain their form after being buried for thousands of years.
It's obvious that, the pressurized vegetation surrounding these objects turned into coal, and should be dated at around 4,300 years and not millions. But according to evolutionists, coal and fossils take millions of years to form, so how could this have come about in only a few thousand years? In the Paleontology Journal in July 2018, scientists were able to create fossils in just a 24-hour period. Here are some of the comments made from the researcher. Using a hydraulic press, the items are first packed into clay tablets about the diameter of a dime. Each tablet is then placed in a sealed metal tube, which gets heated to over 410 degree Fahrenheit, while also being subjected to 3,500 psi of pressure. After around 24 hours of this treatment, the tablets are cracked open to reveal their now fossilized contents. To the naked eye, the synthetic fossils reportedly look just like ones made naturally. Even when they were examined using a scanning electron microscope, the similarities continued. We could see exposed melanosomes, the structures that contain the biomolecule melanin that give feathers and skin their color, and scientists have found melanosomes in real fossils too, says Field Museum postdoctoral researcher Evan Sater, who worked on the project when he was a University of Bristol PhD student. Less stable materials, like proteins and fatty tissues, don't show up in real fossils, and they weren't present in ours either. If a lab can create real fossils in just 24 hours, don't you think, it would be plausible for coal, or fossils to be formed in only a few thousand years, that are naturally occurring. Again, most scientists do not want to hear this, and they can't explain why man-made objects have been formed around coal and fossils, because it does not fit their narrative conclusion, that the Earth is billions of years old. Here is a list from different articles, where living creatures underwent carbon-14 dating. Living mollusks were found to be 23,000 years old. Living seals were found to be 1,300 years old. Living snail shells were found to be 27,000 years old. Living penguins were found to be 8,000 years old. What about newly formed rocks from lava flow? When lava hardens, there should only be main or parent radioactive atoms in the rock, with no daughter elements present. And new rocks formed from lava must remain closed, meaning no contamination from groundwater. The radioactive decay rate should be constant, when a potassium-argon dating method is used. 13 samples of newly formed rocks from lava flow, from Mount Nauruhoi, New Zealand, were sent to Geochron Labs in Cambridge. No location or specific age was supplied to sway results. Five out of the 13 samples were dated between 250,000 to 1 million years old. Eight of the 13 samples were 1 to 3.5 million years old. And the same situation from five newly formed lava rocks from Mount St. Helens, in 1986 found samples to be dated from 500,000 to 3.3 million years. All the rocks contained excess argon from magma, that came from its deep source in the Earth. If newly formed rocks are 3.5 million years old, how can anyone trust dating measurements? After millions of years buried under rocks, soil, and mud, do you think that it is possible for fossils to still have skin, tissue, muscles and tendons, or blood vessels? That would be impossible, right?
Yes, it should be impossible, but fossils have been found to have all these various tissues attached to them, even though the bones had already fossilized. Just check out any forensic laboratory, and you will find zero cases when bones come in contact with soil and water, that it doesn't take long for all organic matter to decompose. Here's how CrimeScenecleanup.com and the Journal of Forensic Science describe circumstances on soil decomposing. Generally, it takes about one year for any human body to totally decompose into a skeleton in ordinary soil, and 8 to 12 more years for the entire skeletal remains. Cold and drier environments will slow down the consumption rate of bacteria, allowing tissue to stay attached to bones longer. So, how could a T-Rex fossil that was found in a 70 million year old deposit still have pliable tissue and blood vessels? How could 250 million year old bacteria be found in old rocks that were still alive in trapped soil? Didn't we just discuss the decay rate when organic matter is buried in soil? How could a fossilized salamander, dated at 18 million years, have soft tissue where the muscles can be clearly identified? How could a 180 million year old marine ichthyosaur still have skin that was still flexible? Paleontologist Mary Schweitzer and John D. Morris said, finding these tissues in dinosaurs changes the way we think about fossilization, because our theories of how fossils are preserved don't allow for this. Do you know what an accelerator mass spectrometer, or AMS does? It transports dinosaurs from the past to the future. What an AMS really does, is detect carbon-14 atoms. Carbon-14 quickly changes into nitrogen, supposedly after about 60,000 years, and when an AMS is used on diamonds, and fossils that are dated to be millions of years old, why is the AMS detecting numerous atoms of carbon-14? Even rock layers that are billions of years old, have carbon atoms. With this measurable data and research that proves that, this is correct using the scientific method, Scientists throw this data out because it does not meet the predetermined conclusion that the Earth has to be billions of years old. What is does prove is that the Earth is very young. Many evolutionists try to show that the samples they are measuring have hundreds of thousands, millions, or billions of years. When they measure an object using one of the dating methods and it shows an age of only a few thousand years, then that of course does not fit their narrative of the presumed conclusion they are automatically looking for, so they use many dating methods until one of the methods gives them the age they are looking for. But, when honest scientists are trying to determine an accurate age of rocks or fossils, unless it contains the an age of hundreds of thousands or millions of years, other scientists seek to throw out professional research, and any articles pertaining to their findings, without reading through their research. On a popular website, newgeology.us, under the links page titled, Carbon Dating of Dinosaurs, are countless articles of scientists turning in data with ages from 10,000 to 50,000 years, that were used during their carbon dating tests, that were thrown out, or discredited because it did not fit with the millions of years narrative, even though the scientists reach a conclusion using scientific methods. Here is one of the reports given. Researchers have found a reason, for the puzzling survival of soft tissue and DNA fragments in dinosaur bones, the bones are younger than anyone ever guessed. Carbon-14 dating of multiple samples of bone from eight dinosaurs found in Texas, Alaska, Colorado, and Montana revealed that, they are only 22,000 to 39,000 years old. Members of the Paleochronology Group presented their findings at the 2012 Western Pacific Geophysics Meeting in Singapore, August 13-17, a conference of the American Geophysical Union AGU, and the Asia-Oceania Geosciences Society AOGS. 
Since dinosaurs are thought to be over 65 million years old, the news is stunning, and more than some could tolerate. After the AOGSAGU conference in Singapore, the abstract was removed from the conference website by two chairmen, because they could not accept the findings. Unwilling to challenge the data openly, they erased the report from public view without a word to the authors. When the authors inquired, they received this letter. The interpretation which you present in your abstract is that, the age of various dinosaurs, previously interpreted as being Mesozoic in age, are less than 50,000 years. Your report that these ages were calculated using C14 methods. There is obviously an error in this data. The abstract was apparently not reviewed properly, and was accepted in error. For this reason, we have exercised our authority as program chairs, and rescinded the abstract. The abstract will no longer appear on the AOGS website. This link goes on to discuss dozens of other examples, where data is thrown out, because it does not meet the evolutionist narrative of billions of years. Even though these examples of fossils are dated to be less than 50,000 years, the Bible tells of a different measurement of only 6,000 years. So, if you have numerous dating tests that are inaccurate, and you have man-made objects that have been found in rocks and coal, that is millions of years old, and fossils have been discovered with tissue and skin still present, doesn't that make you want to question the origins of living creatures and humans? The April 26, 1890, Tombstone Epitaph newspaper, had an image of a pterodactyl that had been killed by soldiers, that were out on patrol. This image has been verified that, it came from this newspaper in 1890, and many scientists had verified its authenticity. However, much of the public claim that, it is a hoax set up by these soldiers, and others say that pterodactyls do not have teeth. How would soldiers know, how to replicate this creature in such a precise manner, when they have never seen one before? And all adult pterodactyls do have teeth. According to the Bible, the last time the human race was wiped away by God, save eight people, was 4,350 years ago during the time, that is known as the Flood during the days of Noah. From that time on, we now have close to 8 billion people in the world today. If humans have really been here for 6 million years, the population should be around 900 trillion people, when using a growth rate of 0.5%. Today's growth rate is 1.1%. there would not be any water left on Earth, or any way to survive a population of even 50 billion. We are truly living on a young planet. The Bible says that, humans and all living creatures have existed for 6,000 years. Don't give in to peer pressure that says, you need billions of years to be here.